diamondclub.tv and the chat room will be on there or you can go to irc.dtns.tv and, okay. and in your favorite irc client and you join the pound chat chat room all righty okay we ready mm -hmm. oh a word of warning for the audience and for you peter uh i've been troubleshooting a, a thing where my camera just turns itself off <laughs> during the show so if my video goes black my audio will start going just just pick it up Pretend and keep not. talking while i get up and go turn it back on no worries all right oh, I th that's what happened yesterday yeah I, well it's happened the past couple of days and i thought it was a battery but it wasn't uh so now i'm trying something else we'll see what happens here we go the Daily Tech News Show includes news, reviews, and spoilers. So if you haven't heard what we're talking about, you might want to know. Wait, that's the other podcast that I listen to. The Daily Tech News Show is sponsored by you and me and, well, everybody. Everybody. Just go to patreon.com slash acedetect or go to dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. Hey, Tom, drop that funky beat. This is the Daily Tech News for Thursday, August 21st, for me, or Friday, August 22nd, if you're Peter Wells, who's joining us today in lovely, you're in Melbourne, is that right? No, no, in glorious Sydney. Uh, oh, you're in Sydney. Okay, why do yeah, I always yeah. get that wrong? I always get it wrong, and now I'm in that part where I think, I think it's Sydney, but I always get it wrong. So, <laughs> <laughs> I, li I lived uh, in Melbourne for about eight years, so yeah, they're both That's fine. just stuck in my head, okay, yeah. that's why. Uh, Peter Wells, editor of Reckoner. Australia and uh, good to have you up. It's always early in the morning for him when he joins us, so we're extra uh, uh, happy to have you along. We got some good stuff to talk about: SoundCloud charging people, selling ads, doing all kinds of crazy copyright stuff. Yeah, it's a it's a good little uh, lineup here. Let's get right into it. Let's start the headlines. The Verge has been chatting with sources familiar with Microsoft's plans who say September 30th is tentatively the date when a press announcement for the next version of Windows is scheduled. The operating system, which is codenamed Threshold, is expected to come out as a technical preview sometime September or October. So if it's September 30th, that would be right at the end of September. Uh, what is guessed by many to end up being called Windows 9 will have a new mini start menu, get rid of the charms bar, and have a few other UI tweaks. We might even get a version of the Cortana virtual assistant. It's possible we'll also get details in this announcement of the unification of Windows RT and Windows Phone. Would that be why they're codenaming it Threshold? Like they're on the threshold of a unified Windows? That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Although maybe, you know, they, they gave away the name Metro, so who knows. Um, yeah, I, I think this is really good news anyway, just because, um, you know, I, I do work in uh, enterprise in my 9-to-5 job, and uh, we were never going to touch Windows 8. And, you know, they, they need to get away from that number. They you know, 8.1 was not good enough. They need to kind of... Uh, get past and get to Windows 9, just because, you know, I, I think it's also kind of common knowledge now that uh, every second Windows is a stinker. And so, they you know, they need to have that um, two... Windows 7 was your last great one. Here's plus two. Yeah. Uh, although XP was good, uh, mm -hmm. it, a lot of people didn't think so right at the beginning, but it is now fondly remembered. So they could yeah. come up with some weird new, you know, name. But I would rather they didn't. I, I like this, 7, 8, 9. I, I'm, I'm glad they got back to that. Yeah, I can um, live with that. Yeah, me too. Reuters citing uh, subscription tech news site The Information reports that eBay told potential candidates for the job of PayPal CEO about a possible spin-off of PayPal. I can see that conversation like, look, if we do hire you as CEO, you might not work for us anymore, just so you know. Uh, whether that would mean part or all of PayPal would be spun off, we don't know, but eBay recently resisted demands by activist shareholder Carl Icahn to separate PayPal from its parent company. So... I'm unsure why they would be throwing that around unless they were just trying to cover their their rears here. And the information is, has had some sources lead them astray recently. Mm. So I'm a, a yeah. <clears throat> it, it seems like something really odd to just kind of drop in an interview, though. I don't know. I mean, mm. yeah, unless it was just sort of like, look, Icon's been pressuring us. Uh, so there's always an off chance that PayPal ends up getting split off. We don't think it's very likely. It could be something like that. Or yeah, just, yeah, that makes you know, sense. That's kind of my best guess. 
And Gadget reports Comcast will officially launch its TV service over the internet. Don't get too excited, though. You're going to have to go back to college if you want it. Uh, the several college campuses that will implement it include Bridgewater College, Drexel, Emerson, uh, Veronica Belmont, an alumnus of Emerson, LaSalle College and the University of Delaware. Service comes included with room and board, so you have to live in a dorm as well, and can only be used on campus, although among the 80 channels are ESPN and HBO, and you can access Watch ESPN and HBO Go apps off campus. Comcast hopes to add other universities soon. A company called Philo provides a similar service already to Harvard, Stanford, and Yale. It's so cute, Tom, that, um, you know, obviously I've never had to deal with Comcast in my life, and yet still the name just kind of creeps me out a bit. Like, it's the the general hatred of Comcast has, has managed it's to cross... just seeped over there. That's funny. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it, it's kind of, if you look at the uh, some of the limitations of this, uh, you know, there's, there's no Chromecast support, there's no AirPlay support, there's basically no way of watching this on a television. You need to be watching it on a device or a laptop. But, you know, I guess that these are... These are those kind of baby steps that you can you expect when something like this rolls out. Like people are too, the co companies like Comcast are a little bit too freaked out to give you exactly what you want right up. They're just going to have to baby step you into this. Yeah, and and when you think about it, uh, a lot of college dorm residents don't put televisions in their dorm anymore because yeah. they have yeah. a laptop and they want that mo or they have a desktop and they want that monitor to take up the space. So it kind of makes more sense in that situation. Plus, Comcast came right out and said we want to get people hooked while they're young to our service. Mm. So then when they do move into their own apartment down the road, they'll want to continue to subscribe to Comcast. And isn't this uh, what Netflix did so successfully years ago? I mean, uh, that, that idea that you could share um, your Netflix subscription with a, a kid at college um, and get them hooked that way. I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm sure that that was one of those, those things that they've, they've always said that, you know, help them with their numbers. Yeah. GigaOM reports the class action lawsuit put forth by Max Schrems organization Europe v. Facebook is going forward in Austria. The Vienna Regional Court gave Facebook Ireland four weeks to respond to claimants' accusations of widespread breaches of data protection law. They can ask for a four-week extension, so essentially they've got up to two months. Mm. Yeah, I mean, poor old Facebook. I, I, I kind of want to want this to go ahead just so I can see the court case. Uh, I think it'll make for uh, many interesting episodes of Daily Tech News Show. <laughs> just, just so we have something to slot into the headlines, right? Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. I, you know, Europe, especially uh, Germany and Austria, have been sort of the watchdogs of Facebook privacy violations. And a lot of people think it, it's it's going too far. But who watches the watchers, right? Facebook's watching us. I think it's fair to at least examine what's going on there. According to CNET, Google Chrome is now available for Cubans to download at google.co.cu. That's the Cuban domain name extension. Google executives reportedly visited Cuba in June to push for greater internet access there. U.S. sanctions make it difficult for U.S. businesses to do pretty much anything in Cuba, and Google hinted as much in their G Plus post about the launch, but they did say they hope to figure out how to make more tools available in sanctioned countries. They've also launched Chrome in Iran and Syria, so they're figuring out ways to do this properly. Uh, this will surely be highly anticipated by the 5% of Cubans that US NGO Freedom House estimates have regular access to the internet in Cuba. The New York Times reports SoundCloud will begin to incorporate advertising in its audio streaming service, starting with Red Bull, Jaguar, and Comedy Central. The revenue will mostly go to artists and labels. A new program called On SoundCloud Premier that'll go along with their partner and pro levels that they already have will let select organizations and indie artists join a revenue sharing plan. Big publishers like BMG, all the way down to indies like rapper Goldlink, are part of the first group that will take part in the Premier program. SoundCloud said they also plan to provide a subscription service for listeners to let you make the ads go away sometime in the future. And we're going to talk quite a bit about that in a minute. The next web reports iBeacon-based company Estimote is promoting something they call nearables as opposed to wearables. Estimote <laughs> stickers have integrated accelerometer and temperature sensors, and they can work with more than just iBeacon. They have a backwards compatibility to the Estimote SDK, and they can work with anything that can send them packets, basically. A developer kit is being unveiled today with 10 Estimote stickers for $99. Now, you say stickers. They're not terribly thin. They're thinner than the Estimote uh. tags, but, uh, but they're not super flat. 
Yeah, yeah, I'd uh, encourage everyone to click through and, and watch the video. I mean, once you get past that kind of uh, smug tech video glaze where everyone's 20 and they live in Brooklyn, um, it, it kind of, it does look like a fascinating little thing, like sticking the stickers onto your bike and watching your uh, your route and all of that kind of stuff. It's, it seems like an, an I, a good idea, but uh, like you said, yeah, they're, they're not exactly tiny stickers. You, you wouldn't, you will recognize them. You will see them on your laptop. Yeah, they're, they're more than a few millimeters thick. Um, but they can do some cool stuff. I mean, yeah, right. That video was kind of annoying at the beginning, like trying to make you feel sorry for your phone because it's in your pocket, not doing anything when it could be doing so much more. I'm like, mm -hmm. I don't really feel sorry for my phone. I want to keep its battery life. Um, but <laughs> the, the idea that, you know, you could put this on a purse, for instance, and it would let you know if you let the purse behind, that, that was a good example mm. of this or on a bicycle so that you know where your bicycle is uh where you parked it or if it's being moved without your knowledge uh stuff like that i guess one example i read about was having it on uh something that you're cooking uh so that you would know when it reached a certain temperature and then you'd be able to go back and say oh yeah the it, 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 it's you know the, the pork is done because the sensor says so that'd be kind of cool yeah, yeah, and if you watch the video as well, it, it's kind of about the first 40 seconds is is dedicated to uh, consumers using it for, for those kind of tasks, and then the next minute 20 seconds is all about shops putting it in their um, in their areas and watching you know the places that people uh, congregate at the most. So you know, I, I think this is they'd be quite happy for the for people to buy a couple of these stickers, but I think yeah, the main push will be. For, for shops and retail environments, yeah. You know, and it wasn't even that creepy. Like, having a sticker on a shoe in a sporting goods store so they can know which shoes were picked up the most times, it's perfectly legitimate, you know? I, that's not yeah. a privacy violation, and it lets them know, like, what stuff people are more interested in. Yeah, yeah, and, and you know, um, I've, I've seen some really great uh, kind of feedback with... Uh, Say the the way that pe people design uh, train stations in this country have has changed based on watching how people actually navigate through the the gates and things like that. So yeah, like it's not all creepy when you when you turn around and kind of monitor how people use the space. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know we we always jump to the creepy, but sometimes it's not. Right. Dive for some news from you. Uh, these are things that folks submit on our subreddit. Get in there and join them. DailyTechNewsShow.reddit.com. It's a lot of fun to see what people are posting. And even if you just want to play judge, you can like put on a robe and a wig and pick up a gavel and then just vote things <laughs> up or down in the subreddit. It, that alone is fun. Of course, we love the people that submit stories as well. Uh, like TM204 submitted the MIT News Post about a paper describing how to take discarded car batteries and recycle materials from them into longer lasting solar panels. Uh, the panels they're making use a compound called perovskite, and I may be pronouncing that wrong, which requires lead. Uh, this has been controversial because lead production is, is fraught with, with problems. However, rather than produce the lead from raw ore, the researchers are taking the lead from car batteries. One car battery has enough lead to make enough solar panels to power 30 households. And then that's a car battery that didn't have its lead thrown in a, a, a landfill somewhere. The paper will appear in Energy and Environmental Science by professors Angela M. Belcher and Paula T. Hammond, graduate student Po Yen Chen, and three other authors as well. And yes, I know the batteries aren't supposed to end up in the landfill, so don't write me the, the mm. proper recycling of battery emails. That was just saying. That's fantastic. They're not wasting though. the battery. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, we've got one of those uh, 3D printers at work that can um, actually use uh, old PET bottles um, and melt them down and turn them into 3D products again. So, yeah, I, I love cool. this. Yeah, it's very cool. Um, I work at a university, by the way, if you're wondering how I get to play with these toys. Um, but, yeah, yeah, it's, it's always fun to see, uh, you know, this, this kind of do-it-yourself recycling. This is awesome. Yeah. BM Buffalo posted the Imager Gallery showing how a fully functional one kilobyte hard drive was made by a user called Smelly String in Minecraft. And you're like, wow, that's pretty cool. Well, there's another one too, a second larger unit created by Theo or Zero JJ can store four kilobytes of data. The devices use redstone to power pistons that represent binary value, values by pushing solid or clear blocks in front of the redstone signal. Solid blocks are used as ones and clear blocks are used as zeros. And then the CNET article I was reading said that some guy had made a computer that could play a 2D version of Minecraft. So, you know, Inception is not far off here. <laughs> Everything about Minecraft just uh, does my head in, and yeah, I, I can't even wrap my head around this one. 
<laughs> Funk Around sent along a Wired.com article with the depressing news that Apple's iMessage is being taken over by spammers, specifically those hawking fake luxury goods, at least in large part. Those are the ones I got, too, by the way. According to one security analyst, iMessage is a spammer's dream because you can spam the entire Apple ecosystem with some Apple scripts that just churn the messages out like crazy. Uh, people can report spam to Apple, but it's not easy. It's a tedious process involving taking screenshots. We'll provide the link in the show notes if you want to do it, though. Uh, just turn off iMessage is another option that you have, at least until Apple gets the hint. I've not seen this yet. So, so you were saying before the show that uh, you've you've hit the uh, spamming already, or I've had well, two, not you personally. <laughs> two uh, propositions to buy some lovely Louis Vuitton bags come in my iMessage, hmm. and they use well, a lot of emojis. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I get spam all the time via Skype. I guess that's the the last one that I I still kind of have to wade through some of the uh, the spam every time I launch the app. But yeah, I haven't seen it in iMessage yet. But it does make a lot of sense that uh, this is where the spam will be coming from, just because it's a free thing to do. Um, and yeah, like like they say, you can easy, easily Apple script it up on any kind of laptop. Yeah, and I think you know, spam technology is now more than a decade old, and all that does is create fake email addresses at known domain names. Well, if you know the domain name is going to be iCloud.com or Mac.com, uh, you can just have that script churn out every possible email address you can come up with, and some, and you're gonna get spam at some mm -hmm. point if you have it connected to uh, an Apple-based email address. And of course, they can do the same thing with Gmail, Yahoo, etc. Uh, so it's not real surprising. Same thing that causes these kinds of spam things to come through Gtalk and Skype, like you're saying. Uh, it's, mm. it's not surprising to me. But Apple's the only one who could stop it, and they haven't done anything about it yet. Give me a button. Give me a report spam button, please. Yeah. Techie Noob pointed out the Android Central article that T-Mobile is heating up the U.S. mobile wars, offering a free year of unlimited LTE service if a customer can get someone to switch from Sprint, Verizon, or AT&T to T-Mobile. That means the refer and the new customer both get the free year. Sprint, for its part, has offered an unlimited talk, text, and data plan for $60 a month. Uh, but that is only available to folks who are off contract. If you're on contract, you can't switch to that plan right now. You know, my wife's on T-Mobile. Maybe I should do this, Peter. I think you should. I mean, uh, the last time I was in the States, T-Mobile had its issues in some of the larger cities. Has it, has it improved since then? You know, in places where they've rolled out T-Mobile LTE, it has improved quite a bit. But I suspect that's because not many people are using T-Mobile LTE. And if we get mm. a lot of people moving over to T-Mobile, they're going to have problems with capacity yeah. just like any other carrier does. Uh, but Verizon, which is great in San Francisco, isn't that great in certain parts of L.A.? And so I've started to think like, well, you know, I, the whole reason I got Verizon is so I'd always have a signal. And it worked until I moved. Mm. Yeah, see, I, the, the one thing I think uh, is holding back American um, uh, mobile co uh, competition, really good competition, is the fact that you guys don't have that one single GSM network where you can just pop in and right. and pop one out again. I've, I've changed networks, I think, three times this year, this calendar year, um, and I've changed networks, you know, 20 times in the last couple of years. Um, I, I have no loyalty to any of my cell phone providers. I know I can switch and my number will be ported within about three hours and I'm good to go. So, um, yeah, I'm, I, I think that's really helped our, our industry be far more competitive than anything I've ever seen when I've been in the States. Tell you what, the FCC wants to solve this net neutrality problem on the wireless side. Uh, just take away everybody's spectrum, because the FCC owns it, and make everybody use the same spectrum for their service. Mm. Boom. Competition. Absolutely. There, there are problems with doing that, I realize, but I'm just kind of throwing that out. <laughs> All right, uh, folks, if you like tech history, I've teamed up with Scott Johnson to put out monthly looks at what happened in tech history each month. For 99 cents, you get what happened on each day of the month, uh, three or four items in most cases, things that helped make the tech we use today, plus you get illustrations from Scott Johnson and the latest book covering things that launched in September. A lot of launches happened in September, even before Apple started doing their launches. Uh, just hit the Amazon store today, so check it out for 99 cents each at TomMeritBooks.com or just search Tech History September on Amazon. And uh, we only have uh, one more month left before I've done all 12. That's fantastic. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely buy this one because um, obviously I launched in September, so I want to make sure that I'm in there. I'll be putting out a revised edition shortly. <laughs> If you buy it, Thank if you, you bought it already, we'll obviously <laughs> <laughs> see all the best things launch in September, Peter. 
<laughs> All right, let's talk about this SoundCloud thing. So they're going to incorporate advertising, as I mentioned. Uh, artists and labels can collect the royalties. You have to be an approved partner. Uh, SoundCloud says eventually they're going to make this available for almost anybody to do, but they're just starting slowly. They've got Sony, ATV, and BMG as publishers. Uh, they've got distributors in Grooves and Seed. Funny or Die is on board, a number of independent artists. So they're, they're trying to show that this isn't just for the big guys. However, they don't have any of the major labels on board yet uh, because the major labels, from all reports, want a better deal and more copyright restrictions than already happen. And I think that's that's where I want to go with this is, is SoundCloud becoming too much like YouTube, right? We had that issue with DJ Cascade back in June where he had tracks that he no longer owned anymore, but they were his tracks being blocked on SoundCloud by his own label. And, and the label apologized and tried to help him out and everything. But copyright violation notices have increased on SoundCloud just as they have caused problems on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I don't know. I, I can't see... I, I, I rarely end up at SoundCloud. I'll say that because I'm an old man. So um, I, I generally only end up on SoundCloud when, you know, my wife tells me to go listen to something um, that the young people are listening to, and I'll, I'll, I'll search it out there on SoundCloud first. Um, but, yeah, I, I do end up there quite a bit for mixtapes and DJ sets and things like that. And to be honest... Um, most of the ones I, I checked before we started recording, and most of the ones that I've loved to death over the last year um, are still there. So I, I don't see this as too big a threat. Um, I, I totally understand where you're going, uh, coming from. Like if if the if the artists themselves are seeing an increase, um, then yeah, that uh, in in takedown notices that is definitely worrying. But um, at least as a SoundCloud, very rare SoundCloud user, um, I haven't seen it so far. Um, uh, most of them, my favorite mixtapes are still up there, and maybe that is just the fact that you know a mixtape tends to be you know 40 minutes, 50 minutes long, so uh, it it might not trigger some of those same warnings that um, a, a, a smaller piece might. Although a couple of things that I read said that the mixtapes are actually the issue for the labels getting on board with this is trying to figure mm -hmm. out like if you do have two seconds of a Britney Spears song, uh, how do you monetize that? How do you charge? for that. And and the labels want equity in SoundCloud in exchange for not suing them for the things that have existed on SoundCloud, which I think is a heavy stick. My my issue with SoundCloud, we use it as the host for the Sword and Laser podcast when we joined the Boing Boing network, and there is not an easy way to link directly to the file on SoundCloud. Yeah, it's beautiful. They've got this flash embed player that is lovely and you can you can comment on it and the comments are always so much more robust and helpful on SoundCloud than they are on YouTube. I'll give them that. They've, they've definitely managed the community in a better way somehow. But it uh, is sort of like saying, hey, we're going to lock your things in SoundCloud. And it's not, mm -hmm. it's, to me, it's not a sustainable situation, right? I don't want to put all my eggs in the SoundCloud basket. Now, I know there's things like MixCloud that are actually better for podcasters, and people have pointed that out. But I just worry that what SoundCloud's doing, and I, I, I know that Young and Wallforce are both, like, really wanting to just do things that help music. I totally believe that. I've talked to Lung before uh, on Triangulation uh, back on Twit, and, and I get that. But it doesn't matter what they want. The business is always going to push these things toward locking down and giving the keys to the big organizations. That's what the big organizations want. Mm. Yeah, God, there's, there's so much to, to get through in, in just that uh, that little bit of uh, talking you did there, Tom. I mean, I, I guess, first of all, uh, if your comment system is better than YouTube, well, you know, I, I would hope so. It's not um, a high but bar, I'll give you that. Yeah. Exactly. Um, but yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I've, I've had a look at them for podcasts as well, podcast hosting, because you're right, the, the uh, interface is beautiful, the way that they, they've, they've been very good at, at moving to mobile very quickly, and, um, you know, the, the, there are so many things to love about SoundCloud, um, but right now, uh, they've just replaced their, their free, their pro, and their pro unlimited with, as you said, partnered pro and premiere. Um, and so if you were signing up today to host a podcast, there's actually nothing you can do there because the premiere is invite only at this stage. Uh, and that's the only one that has unlimited um, uh, time that you can upload. Uh, and, you know, you, you'll definitely, if you're, if you're doing 40-minute shows, you'll definitely hit that, um, the three hours and the six hours that you'll get on Partner or Pro at the moment. Um, but, yeah, I, I do know that uh, we were approached by a, a podcast advertising um, agency a, a little while ago, and they demand that you host on SoundCloud um, just because the, the analytics are fantastic and they want, they want you know, 
they don't want to trust your analytics that you give them. They want a third party to to give uh, analytics between the both of you so that they can trust your numbers. So um, yeah, we, we've looked at SoundCloud a couple of times, but like you said, there's always just been enough for us to kind of go, well, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if this is going to be worth um, you know, uploading our stuff there, and and I've been you know burnt before uploading things. Like I moved one of my old uh, blogs from a self-hosted WordPress uh, to a uh, what was what was the one that Twitter shut down? It was kind of like Tumblr, but they sh uh, Posterous. I, I moved um, yeah my blog to Posterous, and then had the whole thing nuked, and um, I've been a little bit scared ever since. So uh, yeah, I've, I'm. I don't know. I, I like what they're doing. I think they're they're incredibly smart guys, and everything looks beautiful um, in in their interface. I, I am a little bit worried. I mean, I, I don't know. I think they're doing everything right here as well with this move. They're, they're not forcing ads on anyone. Uh, they're they they're taking it as slowly as they possibly can. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll, it'll be interesting to see how this all plays out. Yeah, and to be fair, SoundCloud isn't trying to be a podcast medium, so it's not not fair to judge them solely on that. What they're trying to be is a music medium. And with music, yeah. where your file is hosted is less important. You can have your file hosted in loads of different places. Uh, and SoundCloud realizes that. They're like, yeah, of course you're gonna have you're gonna have a video on YouTube and you're gonna have a file on Spotify and you're gonna have a file in the iTunes store, and that's fine. SoundCloud's okay with that. They're saying we're gonna have a better experience for a lot of people who want to listen, uh, and we're gonna try to sell some advertising but with that when you try to strike a deal to share revenue when money gets involved because remember up till now soundcloud has existed only by charging people who wanted to have more capacity they haven't ever yeah. charged the listener and essentially advertising is charging the listener saying you listen to an ad or you pay for a subscription which if they say they'll do eventually to get rid of the ad um so, so this is a way for SoundCloud, first of all, to make some money, which they, they've had shortfalls up until now. Uh, but it's also going to put a lot more restrictions on what people can do. And, the, and I guess that's the real thing. Forget the podcasting example. It's more about that remix culture that has grown mm. up on SoundCloud, starting to run into some cold realities of how intellectual property actually works in the real world. Yeah, I guess so. But I mean, you know, back to your your point of like the the record industries want their want to work out how to get that the, that cash for the two seconds of Britney. Just God, let it go. Like <laughs> I don't know if you listen to a forty-minute Avalanche's DJ set um, that uses seven hundred different samples by by the time that that uh, mix is finished. I mean, that is such a creative work. That is something that um, they you know they, they've assembled music. Uh, of course, they've used samples to do it, but uh, they've created their own unique piece of work. It's it's please let it go, record industries. I know I know you're not going to, but please. I mean, come yeah. on. <laughs> All right, uh, let's take a quick look at the calendar. One thing on there tomorrow, August 22nd, BoJack Horseman, the cartoon featuring Will Arnett, premieres on Netflix, at least here in the U.S. Uh, I'm not sure if it's going to be on the Netflix worldwide, but I assume it's going to be. Uh, so check that out. Our pick of the day comes from Mike Reed. This is interesting. This is a, a pick that when I did a quick look is incredibly popular among users but has gotten less good ratings from reviewers it's one of those like the critics don't like it as much as the users do uh, and mike likes it it's called you need a budget a great piece of software he says and a set of basic rules to assist you in managing your finances their software is not cheap it's 60 bucks but it is very much worth it there's windows and mac version for the desktop and ios android and kindle fire for mobile the killer feature is dropbox synchronization i can be at the grocery store make my purchase and as i walk out of the store or input the transaction into my mobile device. It immediately updates through Dropbox to any other client and shows me what the budget for that category was and what it is now. The company ex is extremely supportive with numerous live classes to learn the process and software and a great and helpful online community. I recommend this software to people who need help and people who don't. It's a great way to stay on top of your finances and set great goals for the future. And the technical reviews I read compare it to things like Mint and say, yeah, but you need a budget doesn't uh, doesn't sync to your financial institution. It syncs across the platforms with itself. And you need a budget. I, I looked at their fact. They're like, yeah, but that helps you keep aware of what you're actually spending because you have to put it in there. We, and they think that's a benefit. So uh, check it out. You need a budget.com. Thank you, Mike Reed, for the suggestion. Yeah, I've got one friend who, who has been trying to get me onto this for, for the last two years. So has it been evangelizing they definitely, you? Yeah, yeah, they definitely create these uh, yeah, uh, really passionate users. 
Yeah, it seems like it because uh, just looking around, like the user reviews for this are you know four and a half, five stars with thousands and thousands of reviews. Send your picks to feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. Please send your picks, and you can find my picks at dailytechnewsshow.com slash picks. Now, yesterday, uh, Jeff Kanata and I talked about Twitter uh, and their struggle with when to remove objectionable material. Uh, we got a couple of good responses to that. First one comes from Brendan, who sent us an audio response. Hello, Tom, Jenny, and guest. Uh, a quick comment about the um, Twitter free speech uh, beheading video thing um, from yesterday's show. I don't understand how i can't remember who said that they they felt like um it was against their free speech for this third party company to take down um something that they put up but i don't understand it because it's it, it's their service you know that they, they're it's not a public service it's a third party and like if they had put a, I, I i hear the analogy to a bulletin board all the time like a bulletin board some of them are just for job listings you put something else up there you have to take that down um you know they'll, or they'll take it down for you um you know youtube is able to take things down apple has restrictions on what goes in the app store it's their service um it's not a it's not a public utility or forum um and if you wanted to put something up without somebody taking it down that's what websites and emails and all the, those things are for um, just my two cents. Thanks for the show. I really enjoy it. Oh, thanks, Brendan. Uh, appreciate that. Appreciate the feedback. Uh, L. Watt CDR has a similar point to Brendan. He says, I really do not have an issue with Twitter restricting the types of pictures and images allowed on the news fade for these reasons. You can still put a link to your own site that has the picture or video. Actually, I, I, I would correct that, and I emailed him about this already. You can't link... Uh, some of the the... the takedowns that they've done are linking to the picture elsewhere. Uh, he says, you're not limited in your comments on said events. Uh, and Twitter is not the only site on the internet, just a very popular one. And I think that's the key point here. Uh, he says, I feel that there is a difference between censorship and editorial control. A government saying you will go to jail or be punished in some way for saying X is censorship. A platform like a newspaper, podcast, or website saying we do not want to carry this kind of story or this kind of image is editorial control. I think that's very elegantly put. What Twitter is doing is exercising editorial control. And my question then becomes, is that what we wanted from Twitter? We were thinking, I think all of us, of Twitter as a messaging platform, kind of a kind of a neutral thing. Like you just, you know, like SMS, you can say whatever you want. Uh, and now Twitter is saying, well, we have to exercise a certain amount of editorial control here. Uh, is 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 that change how we use Twitter and why we use Twitter? Well, I guess they've always had some kind of an editorial control anyway. Once they became so big that they had to kind of limit uh, what what you saw in your t timeline. You don't you don't necessarily always see every post of every person you follow when you look at your Twitter timeline. Uh, there, there is there are certain algorithms to just kind of push uh, some of the more popular posts to the front. Um, but yeah, I see. I, it was it was an incredible uh, listen yesterday, the the show that you did, Tom. Um, the the thing that I kind of actually w was more concerned about uh, over the last week was actually the the reporting on. Um, uh, the passing of Robin Williams, just because there's, uh, you know, you would know from journalism school, there's there's uh, a lot of rules about the uh, about how you're supposed to talk about suicide uh, in in the press, and and I feel that some of the um, some of the bigger Twitter accounts out there kind of got it wrong in the way that they approached the suicide. They they went into graphic detail and uh, they. In in some ways, the, the the famous one was the Academy tweet where there was a picture of the genie from Aladdin and and, and the, the the tagline was you know it's time to go or you're free now genie um, which is almost promoting suicide in a way uh, so uh, that's that's the bit that actually um, really had me troubled over the last week and and you know and I just think that like. We need to have these discussions because Twitter is this, this big now. It, is, it really is, as you guys said yesterday, um, it is the first source of news that I go to most days on most events. So, um, you know, like it or not, it is almost as important as a New York Times or, um, or a BBC. It, 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 that's where I get my information from. So um, I, I think, you know, I, I, don't, I don't have an answer at all. I just think that it's worthwhile having these discussions. Yeah, and, and, and LWAT CDR and, and Brendan are both right. You don't have to use it. You can go somewhere else. Uh, it's not the only website out there. But we have 
we have seen it act in a different way, or, or at least we haven't experienced it a need uh, personally, I haven't, uh, to worry about Twitter getting rid of posts up until now. Uh, finally, Justin Robert Young sent us an email yesterday. We didn't have time to get to it, so I want to get to it real quick today. He said Uber's corner store, the one where they're, they're delivering uh, uh, convenience store goods to you, is a play for drivers. They want Uber drivers to have more capacity to make money. In their perfect world, their drivers are as busy as they want to be, and this gives them another thing to do. This differentiates them from Lyft and others for now, and that people who pledge fealty to the U the Uber, uh, can make more theoretically boosting their available roster of drivers, can make more money, therefore theoretically boosting their available roster of drivers. This benefits them in capacity, which is the source of all current non-city regulation issues. Cough, <coughs> surge pricing, cough, uh, says Justin. So yeah, I'm you know, figuring out more ways for the drivers to stay occupied and make money brings more drivers to your platform, which gives you more capacity, which means you don't have to worry about uh, surge pricing controversies this often because you've got plenty of drivers out there. Good point. Makes sense to me. Yep. Thank you, Justin Robert Young. We'll see you on the show soon. And thank you, Peter Wells. We saw you on the show today, right now. I appreciate it. <laughs> no worries at all, sir. Always a pleasure. What's going on at uh, Reckoner these days? Anything to let folks know about in particular? Yeah, yeah. Look, we've been um, kind of obsessed, as we always are in Australia, with uh, uh, with the time it takes for movies and TV shows to arrive here, um, and what that means for piracy. So the, this time we've been over the last month, uh, sorry, week, we've been uh, focusing on the delay in. Uh, in movies actually coming to Australia, which for the most part cinemas have, have worked it out. We get day and day release uh, with with Hollywood in most of the the kind of big dumb Hollywood movies that you know it makes sense for them that they they want you to see a movie before you realize how terrible it is, how how bad the word of mouth of Transformers might be before it gets out there. But um yeah, so <laughs> uh, they've they've made they've crossed that um, bridge, but they haven't gotten as far as say our, our digital. Uh, our digital copies tend to still be about 60 days behind um, the US, even though we get the same release date for cinemas. So uh, that's really interesting, and, and we've been trying to pick that pick that apart and work out why that's happening. Check it out. So, it's uh, reckoner.co.au, right? No, dot .com. Dot dot com. See, I always, I, I see, why doesn't the UK just do dot .com, <laughs> dot .uk like everybody else? Then I wouldn't get confused anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, reckoner.com.au, sorry about that. Uh, and of course, uh, you can find Peter Wells showing up here every once in a while as well. And full-time casual on Twitter, right? Uh, actually, Peter Wells. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's Peter um, Wells Peter now? Wells on Twitter. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, right. Jenny, that's my fault. I really need to update my, uh, my information on the internet. <laughs> no worries. Thank you, Peter. Appreciate it, as always, man. Thank you, sir. Uh, thanks to our patrons, 4,227 people finding some value in the show and giving some value back. We seriously appreciate uh, your willingness to part with some of your hard-earned cash. All we ask for is five cents a show, a dollar a month. Uh, if you give more, that is deeply appreciated. Patreon.com slash Ace Detect. And there's lots of people who've just been giving us one-time donations uh, because they can, and we super appreciate those as well. DailyTechNewsShow.com slash donate if you want to support the show in any other kind of way. Don't forget, you can have a voice in what's Stories we cover at our subreddit, dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. Email us, feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. Our phone number is 512-59-DAILY. That's 512-593-2459. And you can listen to the show live at mobile.alphageekradio.com. Visit our website, dailytechnewsshow.com. We'll be back tomorrow with Darren Kitchen, because it's Friday. And Len Peralta will be illustrating the show. We'll see you then. Done. Yay. Brilliant, as always. Oh. Uh, sorry, sorry, Jenny, if I still have uh, full-time oh, casual. Oh, yeah, you know, I, I'm dumb. Everything I wrote about you was wrong. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. Lies, lies. <laughs> are you, Peter Wells, are you or are you not the editor of Reckoner Australia? <laughs> that is true, I promise. I okay, promise. I got that right. Yeah. Mm. And I just See? didn't put anything at all, which is why Tom resorted. All right. This is all my fault. To his graying memory. <laughs> <laughs> well, I should know these things. Uh, no, so, but, yeah. You do have a producer. No, it's all good. <laughs> you have a uh, tired one.
so you did you switch from full time casual to Peter Wells? Yeah, yeah, you about just, yeah. six months ago. So so, yeah. so I'm the last of the non grown ups who's still using a goofy Twitter name. Mm, mm. But yeah, no, you gave me a good reason last time because yeah, the last time I was on the show, I asked you about that. Um, oh, do we see? Yeah. I'm getting senile. We even talked about that. <laughs> No, that's fair. I, I, I like the idea that you know you're you're weeding out um, you know potential people who might just I don't know read read about you one day. That that's not good enough. You have to be a fan. Yeah, you have to work. You got to work at it. Mm, mm. Cloudy with anyway, the chance um, of ads. Nice. <laughs> Speaking of work, I probably should get ready yes. for work. So go ahead. Uh, thank you, man. Good to see you. No worries. Cheers. Bye. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. PayPal to eBay Electric Boogaloo though. <laughs> it doesn't even make any sense, but I love it. All right, let's see what we got in the queue here. I can't shut up. <laughs> Smelly Canada. string theory. eBay electric. You guys are amazing today. But I feel like there's like a not everybody's voting like once for one thing. Let's see what do we got? Mindception. I like that. I like oh. Cloudy with the chance of ads, though. Can you do cool. dollar sign SoundCloud? I could, yeah. Mm -hmm. hmm. I'm reading. Oh, I should read out loud, huh? You could, yeah. I mean... <laughs> I'm just like, hmm, these are interesting. It's more entertaining that way for the rest of us. But. Uh, okay, 10 votes, Cloudy with the chance of ads. Three votes, PayPal. Two, eBay, Electric Boogaloo. I love that one. I, that's pretty great. And then also from BioCow, we have dollar sign SoundCloud uh, with the S being replaced by the dollar sign for all of you who don't see it. Uh, whoa, BioCow's like got a triple axle going on. He's also got Mindception. Triple SoundCow. Triple SoundCow. And then um, <laughs> Smelly String Theory from TVZ Gone. Uh, Beatmaster, these are the ads you're looking for at, along with I can't shut up, as in Carl Icon. Uh, okay. Ah, CS803. SoundCloud is so totally YouTubular. <laughs> and then after that, we just we keep going down. Locked in the SoundCloud. I like that. That's Big Jim. That's Big Jim. Got. Like Big them. Jim was our uh, was our pre-show announcement today. Oh, cool. Thank you. For, thank you. I switched. I, I lied to the Alpha Geek Radio people yesterday. I played them a different one from Big Jim, and then I hadn't got to that one yet at the time. So then I played that one. Uh, Steven Schleicher of Major, Major Spoilers is on our list of people to book for the show. Uh, Jim was asking about that, so oh. hopefully we'll have him on someday Maybe. soon. Where is that list? That's our guest list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's oh, he's in okay. that. He's in that spreadsheet. I'm gonna write his name down. I was Sometimes like, I you use that list every day. <laughs> yeah, he's probably. Um, it's been a while since he was All on. Right, I'll go. I sometimes need a separate list of like, go find this person. Yeah, right. You could put him on that list yeah. if you made that list. If I made that list, if I did that. Okay. Um, All right. So cloudy with a chance of ads. I think so. Too many windows. Cloudy. That's what, that's what Apple said. <laughs> With a that's chance of like that. Ten years old. Um, okay, wait. So I have wait, to wait, 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 wait. What are we waiting on? Oh, uh, all right. So I now have a Google Talk plugin recording. I'm going to open Levelator. I'm doing okay. what doing only much. Oh, yeah. Okay. And you've got it set for wave. That's wave. Got right. it. Should be yep. wave. Wait, where's level later? Hello? Hello? Hey, uh, how about that? The camera didn't turn off today. That's good. I'm not quite ready to say it's fixed because it might still turn off, but... Is it weird that level later went away? I still have the... I'm going to just do this. You have the app, right? It's when you say it will. That it, all right, I'm redoing the install. Oh, okay. Yeah, the, the guy who Conversations Network doesn't make it anymore, but it still works. Yeah. We're all fearing the OS X update that kills it. Uh-huh. 
we live in fear. And then we, there are other level apps out there, but none of them are as good or work as easily as Levelator, which is why we're all still clinging to it. So um, the metal freaks of the world, uh, the yeah. open source advocates of the world, if you could um, all get together and do an open source level later, that'd be great. Thanks. Well, for some <laughs> reason, it processes as an MP3. I wonder why. What does? Uh, no, I, audio hijack. I thought. Oh, uh, maybe I, you didn't save your settings. That's okay. Audio. Just pull it into Audacity yeah. and then export as a wave. It's an extra step, but no, All right. It'll still work fine. Well, actually, you know what I'm more interested in than that mm -hmm. is figuring out why it didn't record. Hold up, quick record, yeah. right? Under so format, you should have custom. Custom wave. Oh, because I didn't select a source to go in with that, right? Is that why? Well, I don't know. I can't see your screen, so I don't mm. know what. <laughs> what when you say you didn't select a source. That doesn't yeah, make any it, sense because it recorded, so you well, would have so you would have. No, I know, but source. I'm saying, I'm saying in quick record, there's uh -huh. the input fold, the input field, yes, and the recording field. So right. The recording field is correct. The input yeah. field says application blank select a source. Well, then that's not what you recorded. Right. Or, or it couldn't have. All right, hold on. Let me go to let me go to Google Talk plugin. Recording. Okay, this is where I'm getting confused. Oh, and I have to go through this again. Select application, but now I know where this is. This is in the library. Well, yeah, those are two different things. Quick record can be set to do anything. Yeah. So that you can just go to quick record every time. Mm -hmm. Or you can go down there into one of those others. But when you set one of them, it doesn't set the other. They're separate things. Okay, so I see. Wait, custom. I see. It's it's within the Google Talk plugin. Yeah. So yeah, you set it in Quick Record, but you if you would have set the application in Quick Record to be Google Talk plugin, then that would have worked. All right. Uh, you just set one in one place and one in the other, not both in the same right. place. So now. That's I what have it sounds Google like Talk anyway. Plugin, custom wave sixteen bit mono save to Dropbox. Blah diddy blah diddy blah. Okay. Silence monitor off. Okay, got that. So now that I have that fixed, we'll try on tomorrow's show. <laughs> That's why we do it. That's, I you know, know, it's good. It's, it's, it's tempting to feel like, ah, oh, I screwed it up, but that's that you no, want to screw it up. Because you want to screw it up now, exactly. Yeah. Um, all right, now I will go to Audacity and import the file. Switch it and level eight it. Level eight. <laughs> Bio, I just saw that. Biocast said, great show, Ace Detects Camera. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Good job not turning off, lazy piece of... Mm -mm -mm. Because I'm not looking forward to buying a new camera, if that were the problem. Yeah, that says... I'm importing... Guys... This whole post show is going to get a lot less interesting once two people are doing things. <laughs> the premise only worked when Tom was doing things and Jenny could just yam, 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 and uh, he could kind of pay attention. But if we're both doing things, it's just going to be a lot of silence. <laughs> That's what you signed up for, okay? Let's just, we're just saying. So you know. All right. So now in Audacity, export, and then I export as a something, something, as a wave. Export as a wave, yeah. There's only one way of Microsoft signed 16-bit PC. Okay. There's only one wave to rock. Rock and roll. There's only one wave. How'd it go in Tin and Vec? Or Tin Vec? Was Tin Vec on? on he was on, on uh, the big show. Please tell me we launched Tin Vec. I'll feel so happy. That would be awesome. Okay, but did Tinvec launch Tinvec and we really can't take any credit for it? No, we're totally taking credit. I don't care. Okay, good. <laughs> good. No, I think I think Tinvec did launch yeah. Tinvec. We just helped along the way. I like how Tom briefly took credit for something, people. Did you see that? <laughs> As a joke. 
<laughs> Tom briefly <laughs> stole credit that he doesn't deserve. There you go. Uh. Getting better. All right, now where did the thing save to? Oh. Well, Longer. when you export, you would have... It, oh, to the desktop? Really? Yeah, you get to choose when you export where it goes. So if you didn't I choose, know, it just goes wherever. but I was sometimes I don't pay attention to all that. <laughs> That's a people problem. Don't you worry at all on vacation. Talk to me. <laughs> oh, my God. What is happening? All right. Now, level later. Uh, okay. I think this... Glad we got Jerry's email in. Oh, yeah, that was great. We got so many good emails yesterday, and then Jeff and I had such a thick discussion. Yeah. Uh, I, I, Sorry I wasn't there for that discussion yesterday, actually. Um, yeah, it would, have been, it would have been cool to have you along, too. It was good. I'm levelating. Oh, my God, I'm finally doing the thing <gasps> I hear about all the time. Is it like everything you dreamed it would be? And more. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. This is just, you know what this whole, like, Jenny learning to really podcast thing is? It's like exposing all the weaknesses of someone who went straight to network television without doing anything else. It's just, like, all the basics of, like, where the things plug in and how the things work that you just, like, avoid when you stay on the editorial side. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, it's a different world. And it always was. Say, yeah, for, no, for, you're right. For us, yeah. I would like one cent of credit for not being afraid to do this. You deserve m many, many Just cents. One cent. One cent. <laughs> you deserve multiple cents. You deserve five cents a show, frankly. All right. All right. I mean, I think if I were a, a listener, I would pledge five cents a show in credit for just that. To, just because just Jenny's learning to level eight. Um, I didn't have the mental capacity to take on Alpha Geek Radio today, but I need to do that tomorrow. Okay. Yep. That's tomorrow's practice. Yeah, I've I, I didn't I guess I really hadn't thought about it, but like at Tech TV, I was working in an understaffed website, so I had to do a lot of things. We had to know a lot of HTML uh, ourselves. Uh, we had great we had great devs at TechTV.com. I do not mean to disparage them, but there weren't that many, so we just had to pick up a lot of stuff from them. And then at CNET, it was the opposite. It was a great big website with lots of devs, but we had to do all of the uh, all of the you know audio and television production. Uh, ourselves. And again, we had great cameramen, a few great editors, uh, but we had to jump in and do stuff because we just didn't have enough people. Right. And I worked at the most unionized, you know. <laughs> you worked at the exact diametric like opposite of that. Just the diametric opposite. We're like, if there was a task, if there was a task, there was a person for it. Like, and nobody shared tasks. Like, it, I mean, that's yeah. not true. I'm, I'm right. exaggerating. But it was so well staffed to the point where, like, I did my thing and the other people did their thing and never And it's not them. just the it's not like you were like and no I got no fine no and I got $40 if I touched a button Ex so. right exactly it was like no you were actively discouraged from going yeah. outside of your thing yeah. yeah which don't get me wrong union people I respect and I only touched a couple buttons in emergencies and we paid the $40 <laughs> uh let's see um all right, so I'm quitting Audacity. All right, so now I have a levelated product. I've done this correctly. Yeah. Uh, and, and so then you pull that point back into Audacity. In, yep. You got it. And I do all the, all I do in that is uh, get rid of the junk at the beginning, make yep. sure the end is clean, and then export it again with the tags and the blah and the blah. For me, the hardest part of the entire process is finding the beginning. Right. Because I never leave enough pause. Right. Uh, to make it really obvious in the waveform. And it, because we always play a different opener thing every day, you can't recognize the waveform. Um, right. But yeah, it's not horrible. Today was right. hard for me to find for some reason. I think because Peter well, and I were just chatting. Let's see if it's hard for me. Chatting. Well, output wave, okay. In, this is giving me a thing that says when importing uncompressed, you can copy them or read them directly. What do you do? Copy? Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I selected right. it and said, "Don't ask me again." A long thing. time ago, and I don't remember. Right. Whatever it says is safer. Do that one. Yeah. <laughs> it will go. Actually, I think let's I copy. Can, let's see if Jenny can find the beginning of the show. Do 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 do. 
Oh no, that's you on the show. <laughs> there are too many toms. Oh, because there was whistling. That's why. Oh, because of my whistling? No, I think Peter was whistling during, oh. right before the, I think, ready? It's a zap. Ooh, Big Jim has an idea. Put a big ding right before you do the intro bumper, or maybe a clap. Yeah. <gasps> we should tell everybody to clap right before their, no, that wouldn't work. Then everybody Click their clap. heels together yeah. <laughs> and believe. I'm excited because I'm getting my hair cut today. Oh, cool. Oh, in that, anticipation of Dragon Con? Yes. Nice. Um, that's what I just did there is called uh, positive positioning because I actually hate getting my hair cut. Nice. But I feel if I say that right, I'm excited, so I'll actually okay, get excited. So then, all right, so export. So And I know how to do this part mm -hmm. because I'm just putting it to Dropbox, changing yeah. the name to our format, and then that part I know. Doing that the ID3 part. tags. Put yeah. Me, yeah. Yep, yep. I did that. I learned something new today. Did you put it in the actual Dropbox Dropbox? Uh, or did you put no, it I in didn't. your own? I didn't want to confuse things while you're doing it. I okay. put it in my Dropbox. Just All right. I was going to look I at it. Theoretically, but... remember. <laughs> so if I clap really loud and believe, this podcast will actually start. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now I need you all to do something to help me start the podcast. Yeah. Turn into a kindergarten Actually, teacher. Here's what I need, chat room, when, when Tom's away, is like at, at 1.30 or whatever the equivalent of Pacific, 1.30, 4.30 Eastern, 1.30 Pacific, 2.30 Mountain, 3.30 Central. Like whatever that time is, at 29 of that bottom hour, I need every single person in the chat room to say, Jenny, are you hijacking the audio? <laughs> I want are like you recording different messages? Are you recording the show? Yes. Because I will have so many things to think about on that first day. I mean, thankfully, we have YouTube as a backup. I know. But, but we need I the backup to the backup to the backup. To the backup, so, right. Yep. That's my, um, oh, I'm so excited. Now, what if they update Level Later while you're gone? They won't update it. Just I mean, don't, I mean, just... what if they... Like, there's no chance that it'll stop working while you're gone, right? Don't change your operating system <laughs> while I'm gone, and it okay. should be fine. Yeah. Uh, if in in the case that it like in the case someday that it, that happens, uh, there's a there's a levelation uh, feature in Audacity. It's okay, not very I've good. Seen that. Yeah, it's just it's not nearly as good as Levelator. It doesn't doesn't really bring the the levels into the proximity that mm. it needs to. I wish Levelator, I wish Conversations Network had put out an Audacity plugin, an Audacity extension. That'd been amazing. All right. So, are you out of the post where I can? I am out of the post. Well, I'm actually not literally out of the post, but I'm done with it. There. Okay. Now I'm out of the post. Okay. Cloudy with a chance of ads. Cloudy with a chance of meatballs. Oh, boy. Meatballs. I want meatballs. Hey, um, so it's getting time. Uh, for us to like have another chat with the audience about what they think about the show. Agreed. The problem is that I'm going to be You're going off to like Dragon Con life. and then I'm going to be gone. So let's do it in September, audience. Yeah, is that let's cool? never do anything in August. As yeah. A job, no, exactly. Um, oh, Eternal Sword is using Levelator in Yosemite, he thinks. <laughs> uh, good. That's good to know. Uh, so yeah, uh, we'll have we'll have some kind of hangout chat, talk to the folks. Uh, so be thinking about uh, things you'd like to hear more of, things you'd like to hear change, things that you think have been trending in the right direction, things that have been trending in the wrong direction, um, and we'll we'll get together in September to do that. Also in September, I will be in New York for a week because Eileen is going to be working in New York for a month. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to go out there for a week just so I don't have to not see her for an entire month. And, uh, I'll probably want to do some, some kind of meetup or something, uh, when I'm there. So, meet up. Yeah. And you know what I was thinking, Jenny, I didn't even tell you this. Um, mm -hmm. I thought about this the other day. We should try to have in person guests. Yes. 
for that for that week. So like people yeah. in New York who could come to wherever I'm staying Agreed. and we could just do the show. I mean, we'd still have you on the hangout. Yeah. Um, but I we like can just that. like sit next to each other in New York. That's Be okay. great if Eileen picks a place that has like a cool backdrop out the window or something. <laughs> I don't know about that. I'm more um, I'm more pressuring her like make sure it has good internet. But right. yeah. Yeah. Um, that's a great idea. I love that. There are so many good guests in New York. Yeah, uh, you know people like Dan Patterson. Yeah. I'm thinking about. We could talk. We could see if he's around. There is a gentleman um, named Ayaz. Andrew Zarian. I as Actar. Yeah. Actually lives in New York now. No, it's, uh, yeah, that'd be good. All right. Um, All right. I'm out of the post. All right. Well, thank you, chat room, for hanging around. We'll see you later. Yeah, bye. Bye.